What's up? This is Atark here from SmartBuyTrainers.com. The device you run Zwift on can make or break your experience. I did a video on troubleshooting Zwift and it made me wonder why do so many people have so many issues? So this is a follow-up video or maybe it should be a prerequisite to that video. Most problems with running Zwift can be avoided if it is running on the right device. I'm going to run you through the most common devices for running Zwift and I will talk about the pros and cons of each one and later on I'll tell you what device I personally use so you want to stick around for that but quickly before we get into that I want to mention that Zwift has minimum requirements for devices and these requirements are published on their website basically Microsoft Windows 10 64 bits or higher if you are running Zwift on Windows 7 you won't be able to do that starting next year so this might be a good time to go shopping for that new PC that you always wanted assuming you can just upgrade to Windows 10. For Mac users you need Mac OS 10.12 which is Sierra or higher for Apple mobile users you need iOS 9 or higher. Android users, you will need Android 7 or higher and other hardware requirements. Basically, if you cannot find it in the Google Play Store, then your Android device is not compatible. So these are the software requirements, but that's not all. The hardware plays a huge part in your Zwift experience. Zwift has a minimum CPU, RAM, and GPU requirements to run Zwift. One last thing I want to mention before going through the list is, and... Uh, no, I was not going to say subscribe and hit the like button, but sounds like a good time to say it anyway. Uh, so please take a quick second to hit the like button. It helps the video and the channel a lot, and I really appreciate it. Okay, let's go through the list. My favorite device to run Zwift on and most likely will give you a trouble-free experience is the iPad. It simply just works. Zwift instantly start on the iPad. The pairing process is very simple and straightforward, and it does not matter which iPad you get whether you have the iPad mini, iPad Air, or iPad Pro, as long as you can still update the iOS to the latest, it will just work. Uh, the iPad uses Bluetooth, so just make sure all your devices are Bluetooth compatible. So if you are using a Garmin hot rate monitor that only broadcasts an NT+, that's not going to work. Also, with an iPad, you can still run the Zwift Companion app on your phone to give thumbs up, chat, and all things you can do with the Companion app. My second favorite device from a simplicity standpoint and trouble-free is the Apple TV 4K, first generation or second generation. Just make sure it has a 4K on it. I have personally used the Apple TV for about two years and really never had any issues. It's also the most economical hardware to get you starting with Zwift. You can buy an Apple TV for around $180. I have seen it even go for $120 on Black Friday, and you only need to get the 32 gigabyte option. Apple TV just works, Zwift starts instantly on it, and you get to use your big screen TV with that. The only problem with the Apple TV is it does have limitations on how many Bluetooth devices you can pair to it. So if you try to pair a bike trainer, a hot rate monitor, and a separate cadence sensor, you will run into these limitations, but you can override these issues by using the pair with the Zwift companion app option. Also, many of the new bike trainers uh, measure cadence, so it can be paired as power, controllable trainer, and cadence using only one Bluetooth signal, which solve the Bluetooth limitations with the Apple TV. Zwift and Apple TV remote do not play well together, but you will eventually get used to it. Zwift is also working on fixing that soon with a new redesigned interface, and hopefully we'll see that new interface very soon. With the Apple TV 4K, you're not going to run Zwift in 4K. Actually, just a basic graphic profile and will get you 30 frames per second, but if you've never seen Zwift in Ultra or 4K, you won't even know what you're missing. Okay, moving on to laptops and desktops. One thing I like about running Zwift on these devices is you can use the keyboard and mouse and use some of the Zwift keyboard shortcuts and different camera angles that you don't get on other devices. Laptops and desktops can work really well. However, this is also where I have found most issues pop up as they vary greatly. Devices from Apple like the MacBook Pro, MacBook Air, and Mac Mini 
Tint runs Zwift very well as long as you are not running something very old. Zwift particularly runs so well on the new Macs with the M1 chip. Easy to pair devices in Bluetooth and you will get a very good performance. With most of the Intel variety, you will get high graphic profile. If you have a new one with the M1 chip, you can run it in ultra graphic profile. Windows desktops and laptops can run Zwift, but these tend to be less consistent. Unlike Apple where the hardware and software are integrated and you sort of know what you are getting, Windows devices can differ greatly from one device to the next. Your experience with running Zwift on Windows will all depend on what you get, how much you spend, when you get it, or who gave it to you. But assuming you have something that meets the requirements, you should have a very good experience. One issue that I have noticed with Windows is they tend to have more trouble with Bluetooth connections. So you might have to settle uh, for ANT Plus, which I personally do not like to use when indoors. I know this can be a controversial topic, but when indoors, Bluetooth works much better than ANT Plus, and I stand by that. And you can also improve your Bluetooth experience by uh, getting a decent Bluetooth uh, hardware. Bluetooth aside, one plus with Windows devices is that if you get a decent graphic card, you can run Zwift in 4K. And once you run Zwift in 4K, everything else will be inferior uh, and you will never be able to go back. Okay, let's talk about running Zwift on your smartphone. These are great and easy to run Zwift. They are convenient as they are with you all the time and Zwift runs really well on them. I have used my iPhone a lot when going to a gym to run on a treadmill. The main downside with using your phone is that screen size and you can't use the Zwift Companion app. But other than that, these just work well iPhones are Bluetooth only. Some Android devices have Bluetooth and ANT+. Okay, so I have run Zwift on almost all of these devices, all except Android, and use them for a decent period of time. From my own trial of all of these, my favorite and current setup, which I have been using for the past two years or so, is this Alienware Windows desktop. I know, everyone who knows me and know how much I love Apple is shocked right now, Yes, I said Windows, it's a 10th gen Intel Core i7 with NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3060 Ti connected directly to a big screen TV via an HDMI cable. It is just sweet. It works so well and I get 4K graphics and some ridiculous crazy frame rates, but unfortunately my TV does not support that high of a frame rate. So I'm usually maxed out at 60 frames per second. Even so, I just love it. I rarely have connectivity issues and with the smooth frame rate and graphics, I feel like I'm right there in Watopia. Okay, this is all I have for you here today. Hope you find this video helpful and help you better understand the different devices you can use to run Zwift. And if you know of someone that can benefit from this video, there is a share button that you can press and send them this video. Remember to hit the like button and if you are still watching and have not subscribed yet, then you know what to do. Thank you for watching and see you guys in the next video. And as soon as Apple release a Mac Mini that can run Zwift in 4K, that Alienware will be out of here.